So this is how we would use Scrapebox to get, um, like if we wanted to get accountants in London, for example. There's multiple ways to do this. Uh, I'm gonna give you a couple here. So um, let's let this start up, takes just a second download the component. So one of the ways to do it is with yellow pages, right? So you can go premium plugin, show available plugins and the yellow pages scraper, which is also the ye tied to yell and the gelb. Gelb. I have no idea to say this is German. Um, yellow pages scraper does USA, Canada and Australia. And then, you know, this is UK and Germany. And so when you buy one, you get them all. Now, yell, if I want to do accountants in London, for example, um, the yell scraper is what I use because that's the UK. Yellow pages, yell, and all the rest are very, very always hard on preventing their data from being scraped. So Scrapebox is taking great links to allow the data to be scraped. But uh, as of today, yell, yell has broken something, which they routinely do. They change their code constantly, so they break scrapers. So Scrapebox is constantly updating it whenever they change it. Um, you can see this kind of browser thing. You would always want to do show browser or whatever if it asks you to accept cookies or privacy, GDPR type stuff. You want to accept all that. Um, and then you would just load up your proxies if you're using them. And then like the city, for example, do London. You could put in your own locations too. And then keywords, accountant. Now this isn't going to work, but I'm going to show you anyway. So, And I'm going to choose zero records per keyword, which is all of them. Uh, you could use a delay. They block super fast. You might put like a 60 second delay and load like a hundred proxies and that might be slow enough in the rotation that you're able to just constantly run because you get them blocked on the front end. And by the time you get cycled back around in the list of IPs based on the delay and the processing time that they're unblocked again, because they usually unblock in a couple of hours ish, but sometimes Yale can take two or three IP addresses just to get through one set of results like accountants London and you move to the next city or the next keyword it's the same thing so they burn IPs fast but but you get them back so anyways this isn't going to work it's going to give me an error and the reason it's going to give me an error is that um, I have it, it like I said it's not working so I can go ahead and click start what, is it? what do I do here I didn't select a location there we go I can click start and I'll get a 403 error um, and it says scraping is complete and uh, if I use proxies, if I use my own IP address, I get a 403 error forbidden because I'm in the U.S. with the USA IP. And they're like, no, you can't have UK. Anyways, um, if you have actually a UK IP address, this might work. They, they may, the code might be different and might work fine. But all of my proxies are US, are North America. And then my IP address is North America, right? So uh, it's not going to work. It'll be fixed. I'll email them and they'll fix it in like probably a day or two or less. And um, then I'll be working, but that's what I would do. You know, that's one great way because you're going to be able to get a lot of information. So it'll be whatever's available, but it would be like this. Um, you can see it in the standard YP scraper. If you punch up something, you can see the different ones. So you get a business name, a rating, a street, locality, phone number, website, email address. The website is what we're after because we need this for contact forms. Um, but you could do this, you know, you can take any of the other data it gives you. And so you could do this obviously with any of the other yellow pages if you're wanting to work outside of the UK, which is yell. So, you know, you have the the rest of them. Anyways, I'm not gonna go into that. Another one you can do is simply if I wanted to do accountants in London. And I'm not really sure that Google should really know what this is, but you could also tack on like London, UK, for example, or I'm not really sure you could stack on a country or you could tack on a postcode. So you could do instead of accountants, you could put in a postcode here. I don't know what the postcode would be. Um, you know, you could put in like, well, whatever, right? This is, this is really easy. This is just like going to Google. So like if we go to Google and we do accountant, you, uh, London, UK, right? Then I'm gonna get some sponsored stuff and then I'm gonna have the little three pack of businesses, whatever, city of London. And then I'll have all of these, right? all the Google listings. So that's what we're going to get here. And we can just go ahead and hit start harvesting. I've got proxies loaded, custom harvester. Uh, I got Google, Yahoo, and Bing. And what are we set to? A thousand results. So we're just going to go ahead and hit start. And I'm going to let this run for just a second and um, see what we harvest. So Yahoo's taken off. It, it's got to load all these up because it's building all the different threads for the different engines and, and the queries. And so it'll take just a second, do its thing. 
All right, and so, um, oh, I have a footprint added. See the extra footprint here, all this nonsense? That is because I have checked up here to use platforms. We want to do custom footprints, so clear all this nonsense out. Try again. I'll pause the video here. Right, okay. So here we go. Um, Bing kind of capped out, whatever. Google, um, I know it's wrong with Google, I broke it. Um, but so anyways, we've got some results, which is great for Google. Just one thing I would say, if you need to do quick troubleshooting is just uh, harvest your engine configuration, import, and download default engines from server. That'll get you up to date with the latest um, there. And then Google has this new, like, um, this new thing. Anyways, I did another thing about it, but so I'm not going to go into that. If it doesn't work, we can fix it. Um, just leave a comment. So, uh, let me clarify that if Google doesn't work, it doesn't get you past the first page, leave a comment. And I'll tell you how to fix it in the comments. So remove duplicate domains here. Cause we, again, we're going for contact forms. So we only care about specific domains. That's 124. Um, some of these are obviously going to be like clutch. I'm betting based on this, that it's, uh, our Yelp, obviously these are, these are directory time kind of things. We're also going to get some specific, um, as my phone blows up in the background, like this one, capitalaccountants.com, doshi, doshiaccountants.co.uk. These are particular ones that we could contact. So um, obviously inside of 124, there's going to be a big chunk that's going to be like a Yelp kind of thing. But um, as you dig deeper and use more words, so you would probably want to do, the best way to do this might be to do postcode. So you could really just get, uh, because there's, so you capped at a thousand results. Most of the time the search engines, especially Google will, will soft cap at like 300 results. So assuming there's more than 300 accountants in London, which I have to assume that there is, then you would need to tack on other things. So you could do London UK, and then you could take this and do like, um, so you're trying to force Google to give you different sets of results. And then you're just going to remove duplicate when you're done. You could tack on uh, keywords. You can tack on numbers. You can tack on whatever you want. Right. Um, and you're just going to randomly get, like you might find accountants that talk about being accountants for agriculture, and that, that's why they're going to show up for the word cow, but they might not show up for the letter A, right? You can do, go through the whole alphabet here and you can use the merge function. But um, the, uh, in fact, I have a list of the top 1000 most common words in the English language. Um, if you want it, just leave me a comment and I can I can figure that out and give it to you. Nonetheless, um, you could just uh, do this. And then when we, so if we search, let me, let me fix this real quick. Well, here, let's not do it. You get the point. What's going to happen is you're going to get a bunch of overlap, but when you remove duplicates, you're going to get more domains in the end, right? So we take 124 domains. I'm going to, you know, you could export them as a text. I'm really just going to go ahead and select them all and copy them because there's only 124. And um, then we have our domain. So now we just need to scan them for contact forms. If I can find my, whoa. And I'm gonna use GSA website contact. This assumes you're gonna use GSA website contact to send the contact forms. And um, while this is loading, I should say, so if you don't have Scrapebox, you can get Scrapebox from scrapebox.com. And if you don't have GSA website contact, you can get it from contactformmarketing.com. And under resources is a GSA contact poster. And then there's a discount code as well. And so you can get those at those places. Now, um, let's just do a new, for example, scan accountant, whatever. I'm not even going to spell it right. I don't care. Uh, I'm going to make sure under filter, oh, let's see, it's under checking, right? Okay, that's unchecked, right? Add domain redirections, new websites, perfect. It comes ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to import from clipboard, and now I am going to go ahead and go to start, check present websites. And I don't even know what this is set on, 10 connections. Okay, that should be fine. And it's going to go through now and it's going to, you can see that we loaded it in 124 and then now we are checking through them. The failed are ones that don't have contact forms. The filtered are ones that are probably redirect or meet other filtering criteria. And then the, the, uh, 
checked ones here are the ones that have a contact form that GSA website contact thinks it can submit to. You can see the check show up in green and everything else that shows up in red and we can make this bigger. Um, anyways, there it is and it's almost done. And so what happens is then when it is done and I'm just gonna go ahead and stop it just for the sake of it, I'm going to select remove and select successfully checked and I'm gonna go okay plus export. And so that's gonna take all the ones in green and now I can then export these things to wherever. So accountants, UK contact forms. So then I have a list of um, here we go. So, oh, popped up over here on the other window. All right, it's a giant window. Anyway, so this is it. So this is all the ones that have, this is the pages. So like this was on the home page. This is, this is the actual pages that have the actual contact forms from that list that we scraped. So what, what was the number here? Where are we here? Accountants, scan accountants. So it found 52 out of 125, which is, which is quite high. If you take a regular .com, .net, .org domain list, you're going to have about 10% that have contact forms, 9 to 11%, depending on, so average 10%. Um, because we zeroed in on, it's good because that encompasses everything. Because we zeroed in on specifically businesses, businesses have a much higher percentage of contact forms. And so what is this 52 out of 125? I don't know what that is, but we can find out. And I stopped it a minute early, but um, 125. So that's like about 40%, give or take. So I'd say 35 to 50% is where you're going to fall based on like, these are real small numbers. So I don't know as it scales up, but um, anyway, so that was 40%. That's good. And then if you could get to a, if you could get to a 70% success rate out of that, you would ultimately wind up with, um, I did that math right whatever well it's it's 0 0.70 times 52 so that would be like 36 forms out of 124th juke probably could probably realistically submit to it maybe a little less a little more anyways that's it so that's the methods I would use to scrape the accountants from uh, the UK or really anything you can utilize uh, various keywords postcodes whatever some sort of location data along with your keywords so keyword plus some sort of location data like London UK plus extra keywords to expand and get different sets of results from the search engines then remove duplicate domains when you are done and then um, once you've removed duplicate domains then you are going to just export all of them and um, throw them in. You could probably, some of these, it might be useful to actually do a little uh, trim to root. I should have probably done that because we want to scan the root domains. Probably every web, every URL on a website links to the contact form, but probably should have trimmed to root first before we scan them in website contact. And then um, you just load them in and go to start, check present websites. And then when you're done, you go to select, remove, successfully checked. And then you can OK export and you can export the results. And then, of course, once the Yell scraper is fixed, same process. You're going to scrape from Yell, export, take the websites, load them into website contact. You could even load them all into the main scrape box, remove duplicates, trim to root, and then load them in and away you go. And that's how you get custom scraped contact forms for specific, um, you know, local businesses plus a location or whatever your keyword is plus location.